Okay, and we're coming on to our next um, video on the tiny little mini-series of the production possibilities curve. And in this um, video, we're going to analyze how the production possibility curve shows scarcity and choice. Now, we're going to start off with the definition of scarcity, but this really should um, um, be familiar to you, simply because this is what we've been kind of harping on about the whole time, uh, when we've been looking at what the actual PPC curve 1 or 2 shows. So scarcity, the definition which has to be learned off word perfect, uh, this is the limited availability of economic resources, factors of production, what we, can, can, uh, what we use to produce goods and services relative to society's unlimited demand for goods and services, right? So basically what we're saying is we have an unlimited want, wants and needs and we only have a limited ability of access to production to produce those wants and needs. So there is scarcity. We cannot have everything that we want. And if there wasn't scarcity, the study of economics would not exist. Now, the whole point is you say, okay, well, look, if we look at the difference between PPC1 and PPC2, um, basically there's been an increase in the quantity and quality of factors of production or an improvement in the state of technology. So, oh, like scarcity is less, but yes, it is. But when compared to infin infinite demands or infinite wants and needs, you're never really lessened, I suppose. Um, the thing what we're saying here is that if our factors of production are at this PPC here, so E, point E, the bundle that is point E, is available to us. We can produce it, okay? But um, basically what we're saying is um, the point F isn't. So when we're talking about scarcity in terms of the PPC curve, what we are saying is everything to the right of, PPC, of the PPC curve is not attainable given our current state of technology and the quantity and quality of our factors of production. So, there will always be scarcity as long as there is an area to the right-hand side. And that's essentially how it shows, how the PPC curve shows scarcity. Anything to the right is unattainable, and as such, we can't get it. It is too scarce. It is beyond our capability of production. So, essentially, the PPC, the production possibilities curve, and again, I just want to remind you that it can be called the production possibilities frontier. But essentially, the PPC is a graphical representation of the constant, the immutable economic truth. That there is always a limit to our production and hence there is a limit to our um, um, uh, consumption. Now once you accept that, then what you must realise is that choice is a necessity that follows on from the previous idea of scarcity. So here's the definition, since resources are scarce, choices must be made. And essentially in economics, what you actually get is you get the realization of scarcity, which leads to choice, which then leads to opportunity cost. Okay, so since resources are scarce, we can't have everything that we want, we must choose. Okay, so the, this idea of scarcity necessitates choice and the idea of opportunity cost. It is clear we cannot have everything that we want. And as I've already said, and forgive me for repeating myself, but when scarcity exists, choices must be made. When choices are made, opportunity costs exist. So while we still have the definition of choice up here, we're also going to bring in the definition of opportunity cost. And this is the one that must be learned off word perfect, okay? So the next best alternative foregone when an economic decision is made. Well, should I... Um, um, work tomorrow or should I take a day off? Should I buy um, this car? Should I take the bus? Should I buy a BMW? Should I buy a Mercedes? All of these are choices because of scarcity. Your income isn't big enough to afford both. Then you can say, oh, well, what if I'm rich? Or, you know, somebody like um, Warren Buffett, like multi-multi-billionaire. Still, there is a limit to what these people can buy. And think Warren Buffett isn't big enough to buy America or isn't rich enough to buy America. There is a limit. Now, that limit, those choices that have to be made by the uber-rich are less severe than the choices that have to be made by the rest of us. But still, certain choices have to be made. An opportunity cost is when we have to give up, um, is what we have to give up in order to get something else. Now, I am sticking with the idea of choice, but don't forget the definition of opportunity cost. Now, going back to a previous diagram that we had, what we're saying here is that our ultimate limit of production is represented by the PPC curve at any one point in time. Yes, there can be economic growth when the PP curve, PPC curve shifts out, or there can be um, you know, the evidence or, or, or the result of um, bombings or a war and factors of production are destroyed, or huge amount of emigration and the PPC shifts inwards. But 
if we can accept this idea, this economic fundamental underlying principle of the study of economics, which is scarcity, then choices must be made. So if we are assuming that we are producing at somewhere along this PPC curve, which again represents our limits of production and as such consumption, at least in this model. So if we're at point B, that means we are consuming 22 and a half burgers and I believe that is 15 hot dogs. So that's what I've written, 22 and a half and 15. 22 and a half burgers, 15 hot dogs. We are using up, at point B, every single resource that we have to produce that bundle of those two separate goods. There are none spare. There are no further gains that can be made through increased efficiency. Okay, given a, a, a fixed amount of factors of production and a fixed state of technology, and we're using all of our factors of production as efficiently as possible, we are on the PPC curve and we cannot produce any more of both goods. So what's the opportunity cost? Well, if we want more of one good, let's say a point A, point A gives us 40 hot dogs and point B only gives us 15. So if we want more hot dogs, well, we have to give up a certain amount of burgers, and we are going from 22 and a half burgers to 15. So that's seven and a half burgers we would have to give up in order to get the extra 25 hot dogs, which is 40 minus 15. So there is a cost, and um, this is the, the kind of premise to this is the reason that things, can, not everything can be free. Now, non-economic goods like fresh air can be free, but it really does depend on where you live. And I've been in many cities where, you know, going outside is is not fresh air and so on and so forth. And, and, and we'll come to that, the idea of common pool resources or common access resources later on in the microeconomic unit. But what you have to understand is that when we are using all of our resources and efficiently, which we always want to do, given a fixed amount of resources and a fixed state of technology, um, if we want more of one good, we have to give up some of the other. We, ha we have to give up something in order to get more of something else. The only way around that is long-run economic growth, which is an outward shift in the PPC curve, an increase in potential um, and productive capacity. But this is what we have to understand, that um, we when we are on this curve, when we are Re being efficient in terms of this uh, economic model. If we want more of one good, we have to give up some of the other. And that brings us on to what I believe is our last video or our last set of videos on the PPC, which is opportunity cost. Guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that this helps and I do hope to see you in the next video.